the meeting to order and chat if, we, just, if you would call the roll. Just one second, Roberta. Are you guys ready at WSCS? Okay. So we'll we'll call a roll call, Roberta. Here. Older person Wolf. Here. Dave Soxie. Here. Steve Harrison. Here. Steve Harrison. Steve, you're muted. I am here. Dave Gass. Here. James Owen. Here. Amy Horst. Here. We have a full crew. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let uh, pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, do we have any conflict of interest with what's on the agenda today? Hearing none, let us proceed. Uh, minutes from the April 28th, uh, 2020 meeting as presented. Chair, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Just stay there. To approve. And move and second it. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Roberta, aye. Roberta, for those, for those, Roberta, for those that are making uh, motions, can you please state your name first so we know who it is? Perfect. Okay. Motion made by Wolf, seconded by Harrison. Thank you. Okay. And motion carried. Any opposed? Nope. Motion carried. Thank you so much. Um, Okay, we have a request by Anglers Avenue to use the adjacent land to their current property. Dad, um, if you would give us the background, please. So Paul Roberts is in the council chambers with us. I'm gonna, he's actually at the podium. I'm gonna turn it over to him to explain his request and then we'll follow up with some discussion. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Good morning. Anyways, uh, the reason for uh, our request is basically to provide more services to our customers throughout the summer uh, with the social distancing. Uh, we've reduced our tables. We're at 50% now uh, inside and outside on the patios. And what we would like to do is uh, experiment with a tiki bar atmosphere on the east side We've contacted uh, tent companies and we've got the information we need there. Uh, we'd also be looking at use, utilizing all disposable cups and cans, you know, nothing washable out in that area. Um, we'd also be looking at some entertainment as funds are available and uh, basically just a tiki bar atmosphere. So is, Chair, can I ask a question? Is it so? It's not very clear to me the timeline. So, is the plan to put the tent up now and keep it up through September? Soon. Well, as soon as we can. We've got to coordinate quite a few things yet. Uh, we want to check with the city about some porta potties because we've got limited uh, facilities, especially with the construction going on to the east. Uh, I'm not even sure if those uh, restrooms are open, but we still have a, a great deal of traffic in the area, especially with Blue Harbor being opened up again, and uh, we're one of the only places that people can stop to use the facilities, and it's kind of, you know, putting a burden on us with mm -hmm. our customers. Um, okay. Paul, this is Roberta. It is still not clear to me. You are intending to erect the tent and keep it on that property for the entire summer? Well, we're looking at like 90 days. We've uh, checked with the tent companies and they'll do a 90 day rental with us. And we would take care of the lawn maintenance and any overseeing, 
that would be required after use of the property to get back to where it was? Did, I, did that answer your question? It did. Um, okay. One, one other thing. We, we have heard proposals from you before. Typically, we see uh, permission for events, and the tent goes up and the tent comes down, and then the tent goes up and the tent comes down a couple times a summer. Correct. Um, this is this is a little bit different. Um, so I would I would ask the committee their observations. I guess, uh, Chair, I would have one uh, question regarding the entertainment. As uh, is there any restrictions in terms of the neighbors having concern about outdoor outdoor entertainment on a more permanent basis rather than just an event basis? I mean, the concept of a tiki bar, I think, is, is great from an entertainment point of view. However, there are residents right across the street. I mean, do we run into any issues, or is that a non-issue? Can you discuss, Paul, what you think that hours of operation well, are going to be? Well, the hours of operation, what we're looking at now is like uh, 3 or 4 in the afternoon till about 10 o'clock at night. We don't want to really be out there after 10. Uh, and if we have entertainment, say, on a Friday or a Saturday, I believe uh, we're limited to 11 o'clock. So on a Friday and Saturday, for sure, we would be done by 11. Uh, with any, so uh, this would be this would be a, a six day a week, seven day a week event. Correct. We're we're open six days a week right now, uh, closed on Tuesdays. But we're hoping by July 1st uh, we'll be ramped up and ready to go seven days a week. But we've got additional staff to hire to make this work also. First, this is David. I don't know if you can. Yes, David. Favor, but I, I, this is something that really requires sort of a written agreement that spells out sort of hours of operation, types of entertainment, what happens if you violate the agreement. I mean, this is. I think it's, it's, it's an interesting idea. It's, it's definitely worth trying in this crazy time we're living in. But you really need something. You just can't approve this on a resolution. I mean, you, I think this, something needs, this needs something that um, the city attorney's office prepares that kind of outlines the basic rules of conduct between the parties and what happens if someone violates that. And, that's just my thought. I, I, I think you need something more involved than just a resolution from the RDA and when, when it's something that's going to go on for 90 continuous days. Roberta. Any other comments? Robert Amy? Yeah. Uh, you know, my feeling is that it is such an extraordinary time and, um, and anything we can do to help with outdoor dining so that restaurants can stay viable and there's stuff to do in Sheboygan um, that is safe during the summer. I know, you know, from the Art Center perspective, we had to cancel our, um, you know, summer concerts and other things. So I think we should be as encouraging as possible. I do uh, agree with Dave that perhaps we could, instead of looking at the normal event solution that we typically go through with anglers, perhaps we look at a temporary um, rental of that property um, as it is a trial period and you know they're thinking um, and have considered a more permanent solution um, I think it would be a great addition for the riverfront but um, perhaps it's a 90-day you know ground lease so that there are some more specific terms in order um, and that uh, it's also fair for anybody else um, that's down there and, and would come to us with um, really wanting to occupy a uh, um, space for that amount of time. Okay, thank you, Amy. R Roberta. Uh, you have to be introduced. Yes. Uh, is uh, Chuck Adams on the line? Uh, I Thomas Cameron is. Th Thomas, I know that you're not on for this item, but my question is, is that something that we could work with the attorney's office to get a draft of an agreement that we could bring back to this body? I think that's definitely doable. Um, you know, I'm hearing a couple of different forms that it could, it could possibly take, but I think in general, what I'm hearing is a desire to have 
sort of the rules and the expectations really clearly laid out. That's so exactly what we're hearing. So um, let's let's do this. Let's send it to the city attorney's office. Do a temporary ground lease and um, spell out exactly what the rules of engagement are, basically, for that property. Um, I'd just like to observe that. Um, in previous conversations with um, English Avenue, they have been wanting to actually build a speaky bar on that area. So um, I think doing a three month trial, given the current circumstances, um, would be warranted. So um, let us take that back to the city attorney's office and call if you would work with uh, staff to pull that together and then back to us we can um, move forward with the discussion. Anybody else? Can I make a Bert? I'd like to make a recommendation. Okay. Uh, Bert? David first and then Steve. Bert, can you hear me? David, yes. Yeah. Okay. I think it's uh, I'd like to make a recommendation. I'd like uh, staff to be able to create this agreement, but in lieu of time here, we're already sitting at what, what is today, the 17th. I'd like to get permission and approval for them to go forward based on staff putting together this several page agreement. That's okay. my recommendation. We don't need to bring it back to this body because that'll take too long. Is, is that a motion, David? Yes, ma'am. I would check it. Okay, there's Amy by David Soxy, seconded by Amy Horst, that this goes to the city attorney, to staff, and um, they negotiate um, the rules prior to granting the position. Uh, Chad, is it reasonable to assume we could get this done next week? I would think so. Great. I, but I, I think that would really help. And I agree with Amy Hart. I think we need more of this, this offense and outdoor stuff for people and have things for them to do. Okay. Any other discussion? Bert, I got five minutes left. Is, is there anything else you need out of me? Uh, no, David. Sorry about that. I apologize, everybody. I got to run. Okay, thank you. Okay, motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carried. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, discussion and action on um, the loan related to the Three twins ice cream shop. Uh, as you recall, we had an outstanding loan with three twins. They are, uh, are or have gone out of business. Um, so we need to hear from the about what's going on here. So if Brad I can, or Tom. if I can start out and then Thomas will fill in. Um, so we made. We made a loan to three, uh, three Twins Ice Cream back in October of 2013 for $120,000. And that loan was for equipment and purchase of the property at 816 Michigan Avenue. Um, the, they have paid it down to a, a roughly $60,000. Um, they had met all the job creation requirements. And then uh, when COVID hit, they made the decision to uh, sh shutter the plant. So um, we have, we had a note that was 3% for 10 years. It was subordinated uh, personal guarantees and a uh, mortgage on the property. So I'll turn it over to uh, Thomas to give you guys an update as to where he is in the negotiations and what it looks like for us with the remaining 60,000. What happened to the voice? Okay. 
T- Thomas, can, Thomas, this is Chad. I don't think he can even hear us. Thomas, can you hear me? Nope. <laughs> the only thing that I could say is we dial back into the go to. Oh. Thomas, can you hear us? No. Nope. <laughs> he sure is. Negotiating, we're in first position on the building, so he's just negotiating it from there. But they're a California company, so they're filing under California law, and their bankruptcy laws are different. But it looks like there's enough equity for us to get paid back our portion. Now we lost him completely. Janet, you're gonna have to make up the notes. I was gonna say. So we can't. So Roberta's asking a question, and we can't even hear her. We may have to watch. But how are we going to do the rest of the agenda? The only other thing would be is to log in and get on. it up on WSCS. Should we try disconnecting on here and reconnecting? I'm going to try that. Extension is not valid. I forgot. I forgot to dial a nine. Sorry. Well, they're all still doing their thing, so. Please enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. To enable audio controls, please enter your audio PIN followed by the pound or hash sign. If you do not... So I wouldn't, I mean, file the, file the proof of claim, but I wouldn't wait around. I'd, I'd approach and see what they have to say. Yes. David, would you like to put that in the form of a motion? Sure. Um, I would move, I, I don't know if you need our approval to file a proof of claim, but I mean, I would, I, I would move that the uh, proof of claim be filed in a timely basis and all other actions be taken, that could be taken to, in, within the, the legal proceeding, but also that we uh, pursue the guarantor for payment on his guarantee post post. Personal guarantee. Right. Okay. Sure. Roberta. It's been moved by Dave Gaff and seconded by Todd Wolf. Roberta. Any other discussion? 
Yes. So we lost some, we lost sound in this council chambers and heard none of the discussion. So can Dave, it's a proof of something in a timely basis, but we didn't hear that. What was the word? Proof of claim? File a proof of claim. Okay. Proof of claim in a timely basis and, you know, take such other actions to, you know, perfect our claim in the bankruptcy, but also approach the guarantor about payment on the guarantee immediately. Okay. We got that. Personal guarantee. Do you have that now? Yes, we do. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Are those opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, and discussion on the Old World Creamery and their job requirements for uh, their business development loan. You recall we have a couple of loans with them. Uh, Chad, you want to give us the background? Yeah, so we have two $500,000 notes with them. Um, the second $500,000 note was executed, I think, in May of 2016, maybe, um, or 2018. I don't have the numbers that f in front of me. But anyway, uh, they were under that note. They were required to create 20 nine new positions with 51% of them meeting the low to moderate income threshold. <clears throat> they have met that requirements and uh, actually uh, have a few more people on and, and have met, met 26 of the jobs meeting the low to moderate income threshold. So we're looking for approval from uh, the committee to uh, satisfy the job creation requirements for that loan. Okay, Cheryl will entertain a motion to satisfy job requirements and find the appropriate documents. So moved. Todd Wolf moved. Is there a second? Second, Harrison. Steve Harrison seconded. Okay. Any other discussion? Great. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Roberta, so Roberta, if I can interject yeah. one other thing, you'll recall that loan required them to get a new sign, and I don't know if you've been down Erie Avenue yet, but they have um, charged up their new Old World Creamery sign and taken the old one down. Yes, I saw that yesterday. Thank you very much, Old World Creamery. Okay, any other... Um, discussion. All right. Update and um, regarding the innovation district, as you recall, this committee owns the, uh, the redevelopment authority owns the property and we um, submitted a letter to the um, funding uh, organization that we would sell the property to the SCEDC foundation for a dollar and they would be able to use the value of that property as a match for the grant. Um, Chad, you wanna catch us up on that? Yes, so the grant was submitted last week, Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, the, the building has been, uh, had a number of gyrations through the process, but in the end, it, it's a 20,000 square foot building, 10,000 square feet for, per floor. Um, the first floor is, um, is 5,000 square feet of Millpour Sigma as a chemical lab, um, and then some event and programming and a prototyping lab that would be um, operated by the EDC, but um, the, the technicalities of it would be uh, through Lakeshore Technical College. So they would provide um, professional people to operate a prototyping lab for startup businesses. On the second floor is a combination of Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation's offices, small business center offices, SCORE offices, um, basically help for entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs looking for a place to get some counseling and stuff, as well as some incubator space. So there's some, a number of small offices 
and a little bit larger size offices where you could rent um, a space and start up your business and kind of collaborate with other uh, businesses. And then there's a event programming space for the uh, programming arm of the innovation district. So the total project is about 6.1 uh, million dollars. They've asked EDA for 4.7 million and would end up financing the difference of the note um, and have gotten a preliminary commitment from a bank uh, to do so. So in the end, the application has, um, they were very successful in getting almost 200 and some new jobs to be created. I think it's 217. Um, a new jobs to be created across the county as it relates to this project, and then a retention of about 150 jobs and about $31 million in private investment. So we're optimistic that the EDA is going to be on board with this. The EDA kind of advised us that they probably wouldn't approve a grant more than $5 million, so that's kind of been the kind of bringing the project down to a $6.1 million project, but um, all, all in, it looks like it's a fairly good opportunity with a, you know, go, a great first start in the innovation district. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, we'll just wait and see um, what the timeline is for them to review it and get back to us with awards or questions or whatever. This is Bert. Do we have any idea of um, timeline? We do not. No. It's a... It's on a first come, first serve basis, so it's dependent on how many applications they've received. Um, we were led to believe that they had at least five applications. Now, this is an a entire nation competitive process. Um, so I think we got in early enough because um, they just uh, announced it about a month ago. Um, but we'll have to wait and see what their timeline is. Any other questions? Uh, this is James. Um, yes. I, I just, I, I guess, outside of this building, um, I don't know if this is relevant to the discussion right now, but uh, have there, has there been any developments as far as what the uh, this innovation district is ultimately going to look like outside of this one building? Um, are there any um, conceptual developments or ideas that will make this an appealing draw for the for the city outside of an office building. So to answer your question, we've we've hired an architectural planning firm to help us lay that out, but we have put them on hold um, to see where this first building development goes, and then to come back and look at the larger area and master plan it out. Um, uh, once we know if this building is going to be a go or not. So we've got money um, in our budget for parking improvements. We're talking about some shared um, potential like plaza areas that would be more of a public feel uh, incorporated into the building. Um, so yes, I, we, we haven't moved forward yet because we want to make sure that the, you know, we can see that there's a building that's coming and then the idea would be to try to uh, energize a space around whatever happens ultimately in the building. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thank you for the question. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Hearing none. Um, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. It's moved by Todd Cole. Second. Seconded by Amy. Are there any objections? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Are adjourned. Thank you.